Hi everyone, welcome to ACFI 1003 Introduction to Finance and Topic 3, where we'll be covering non-bank financial institutions. If we have a look at what we've done over the past couple of weeks, in week one we introduced the financial system, which was made up of financial institutions, financial markets and financial instruments. In week two we covered the financial institution banks in more detail and what we're covering in week three is non-bank financial institutions in more detail. So the learning objectives for this week's topic include understanding the different types of non-bank financial institutions and the role they play in the financial system, the types of products and services they provide, as well as the principal sources and uses of funds for each of those non-bank financial institutions. We're going to start with discussing investment and merchant banks first, but however, before we do that, we'll just introduce the topic and have another look at the assets of all the financial institutions in Australia. Now, last week we examined commercial banks, and in examining commercial banks, we discussed how they're the most important of all financial institutions. And now what we're going to do in this topic is have a look at non-bank financial institutions, such as investment banks, finance companies, managed funds, as well as insurance companies. And we're going to examine each of these financial institutions to see what role they play in our financial system. Let's have a look now at investment and merchant banks. As we discovered in last week's topic, commercial banks are authorised deposit taking institutions so they can accept deposits from customers, whereas investment or merchant banks are not able to take deposits from customers and as such we refer to them as money market corporations. Now before deregulation of the banking sector, the Reserve Bank of Australia restricted the interest rate on loans and these authorised deposit institutions or commercial banks were not really able to lend to businesses who were high risk because the interest rate didn't compensate them for that risk being taken. So what these merchant banks began to do was borrow money from the financial markets given they can't accept deposits and they started to lend it to riskier business longer term. And what happened was they started, as a result, they started to grow quickly. However, since deregulation, these commercial banks have clawed back their business and now their market share is increasing as a result of being able to compete with merchant banks for lending. Investment banks make most of their money by providing advisory services which are off balance sheet. And just one thing to note, is there is very little difference between what a merchant bank and investment bank does and these terms effectively are used interchangeably. So where do investment banks get their money from? Mainly from issuing securities into money markets as well as capital markets. Remembering money markets is for short-term securities, capital markets is for longer-term securities. What do investment banks do with their money? Well, typically they do have limited lending to their clients. However, primarily their business is about providing advice to their clients. And examples of investment banks that you may or may not have heard of are organisations such as Macquarie Bank, Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan. So what kind of off-balance sheet business are investment banks involved in? Well, to start off with, they're foreign exchange dealers. They provide advice on raising funds. So for example, if a company is looking at raising capital to invest in a project, then an investment bank will advise them on how best to achieve that. They might underwrite the issue. So for example, if the company is looking at issuing shares and investors don't take up all of the shares on offer, then if there's an underwriting in agreement, then the investment bank will take up any shortfall. Investment banks also provide advice on mergers and acquisitions, whether they be in the same business, a related or unrelated business. And the reason for a merger and acquisition might be because of economies of scale, increasing efficiency, or finance. So 
if it's a bigger company, they might have a greater scope to finance the business, more investment opportunities. It might be because the business wants to diversify into new areas and there are also tax considerations associated with mergers and acquisitions. And what these investment banks will provide is basically some analysis and advice associated with the process of merging or acquiring another business. So as I mentioned previously, that would be analysing and valuing the business so that their client knows, for example, what a fair price is. They will help with the negotiation process, provide due diligence associated with checking the operational and financial condition of the business that is being merged with, as well as any associated regulatory requirements.